Hello world, Liu here, and today let's talk about 7 things I only recently knew about Python's print function. Number 1, the set keyword argument. So when we first learn about the print function, we know that we can do this 1, 2, 3, and if we print this, we will get 1 space, 2 space, 3. And here we can add in as many things as we want apple, orange, pear, and so on. And if we print this, we are just going to get whatever we pass into the print function, but with spaces in between. So here, the space that happens in between 1 and 2 is actually due to the SEP keyword argument. So here, the SEP stands for separator, and by default, SEP is equals to a space, like this. So if I actually don't pass in anything into the SEP keyword argument, SEP will be equals to a space, and that is why the stuff that we print are separated by a single space. However, if I replace this with a dash, things are going to look very different. So if I run this, notice that now we have 1 dash, 2 dash, 3. So right now, instead of a space, we have a dash because we use the set keyword to override the default set value. So here, if I add an additional dash, this will be the character that separates whatever we print. So now we have 1, double dash, 2, double dash, 3. And similarly, if we add a new line character here, Python will continue doing its thing. And now we have 1, 2, 3, but separated by new line characters. Number 2, printing to a file using the print keyword. So here, I'm going to print apple. And next, I'm going to add in a file keyword argument. So file is equals to open, and let's say test.txt. And let's give it a mode append. So what this does is that instead of printing to standard output, which is whatever we see in the terminal over here, this will actually print to a text file, which is test.txt. So let's run this. And notice that we have nothing in our terminal, but we have created a text file. And here we have apple. So here, the file keyword argument will actually default to standard output, which is whatever we see in our terminal over here. However, if we overwrite the file keyword with something else, such as an open Python file, the print function will actually write to that open file instead. Also, one thing to note is that I highly recommend you to use this and put it in a context manager. With open this one as f and file is equals to f. Number three, the end keyword argument. So let's say we print apple and print orange and print pear. So if I run this, I'm just going to get our normal apple orange pair. So when we first started learning about the print statement, we know that the print apple will be on one line, the print orange will be on the next line, and the print pair will be on another line. And that's why it looks like this. So this is actually because of the default end keyword. So end is equals to new line character. So if we don't pass in anything to this end keyword argument, it will default to the new line character. So n is equals to new line. And similarly, n is equals to new line. So what this means is that after printing the string apple, the print function will add an additional new line character. And that is why apple is on one line and orange is on the next line. So what if we remove the new line character and instead we pass in something else like a space. And if we run this, Notice that apple, orange, and pear are now on the same line. So right now, after apple, instead of adding a new line character, we add a space. So whatever that is printed after this will happen on the right side of apple instead, because there is no new line character here. So one interesting escape character that we can pass into the end argument is backslash r, which is the return carriage character. So I'm going to import this from time import sleep. So this will just make our script sleep for a while. So sleep for, let's say, one second. And here I'm going to print orange. And if I run this, we have apple and orange. So once again, let me make this longer, three seconds. So let's run this. And notice that our cursor is at A currently. And after three seconds, orange is actually printed at wherever apple is. So this return carriage character will actually make our cursor go back to the start of our line. And whatever is printed afterwards will actually override Apple. 
So let's make apple slightly longer, apple pie, and let's print orange. So if we run this, we'll get something slightly weird. Here we have orange pie. So what's happening is that apple pie is being printed, but because of the return carriage character, the orange will start printing from here. So O will override A, R will override P, A will override the second P, and so on. And that's why orange will override apple space, and therefore we have orange pie. Number four, we can actually print our output in color. So before doing this, we need to pip install a certain library called Colorama. So pip3 install Colorama. So for me, I've already installed it. That's why mine looks like this. So here, I'm going to import something called for. So from Colorama, import for with a capital F. And print for dot red plus apple. So what's happening is that by adding this thing before apple, I'm going to make apple red in color. So if I run this, I'm going to get apple in red. So let's repeat this two more times. So here I'm going to do blue and here I'm going to do green. And let's change this to orange and let's change this to pear. And once again, if I run this, I'm going to get apple orange pear, but apple is red color, orange is blue color and pear is green color. So there are actually many more colors inside this four object that you can go and explore in your own time. Also, one thing to note is that if you want two colors on one line, you simply need to do this. So four dot, let's say blue plus space pie. And if I run this, notice in my first line, I have apple pie where the apple is red and the pie is blue. And this is because whatever happens after four dot blue will be blue in color. Number five, Printing in color without external libraries. So here I'm going to add this bunch of weird stuff and I'm going to run it. And here we are going to get apple, orange and pear, where apple is red, orange is blue and pear is green. So take note of this weird gibberish before apple. This is actually a special escape character that makes whatever comes after red in color. So similarly, this escape character will make whatever comes after blue in color. And this escape character will make whatever comes after green in color. So here we can actually print our outputs in color without having to use the Colorama library. But the Colorama library just makes it such that we don't have to look up or memorize these escape characters to print colors. So in order to find these escape characters, you can simply do a quick Google. Number six, we can actually unprint stuff in Python. So notice that in my intro just now, let me run this again, I can actually animate this weird looking Python. And this is because of this escape character here. So this is actually made of two escape characters. So this is cursor up and this is clear line. So the cursor up escape character will actually make our cursor go up by one level. And the clear line escape character will clear whatever line the cursor is on. And let's say I'm going to print apple, orange, pear. And next, I'm going to print cursor up plus clear line. And n is equals to nothing. And afterwards, I'm going to print pine, apple. And if I print this, I'm going to get apple, orange, and then pineapple. So what's happening is that apple, orange, and pear will still print as per normal. But this line here will actually unprint pear for us. And after unprinting pair, we print pineapple. So let's add a sleep here from time, import sleep, and sleep for two seconds. And let's run this again. So apple orange pair. And after two seconds, the pair becomes a pineapple. So this cursor up plus clear line combo is actually quite powerful. And we can even clear multiple lines if we want to. So let's multiply this by two. And let's run this. So apple, orange, and pear. And after two seconds, orange and pear will disappear. And thus, using this on a higher level, we can animate stuff such as a moving python. And number seven, pprint. So here, we have a nested dictionary containing apple, orange, and pear. And the values of each of these is another dictionary. So here, if we print D, 
and run this, we will get a long line of stuff which isn't very human readable. However, we can actually use pprint to auto format our dictionary in a more human readable manner. So here, we can add a p in front. So it's actually a pprint which stands for pretty print. So before we can do this, we need to import it. So from pprint import pprint. And now we are able to use the pprint function. And if we run this, we will get this. So notice that our complex dictionary is actually formatted in a more human readable way for us. So we can do this too and then it's equals to 4. So if we run this once again, we will get it in a neater format. So thanks for watching and hopefully you have learned at least one new thing about the Python print statement today. See you in the next one.